Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial on complete.net web APIs. Uh, so in this tutorial, uh, we'll be looking uh, at uh, configurations or in other words, app settings.json. So we'll have a look at how to read the values from there. Uh, we'll also have a look uh, at how to store uh, confidential data. So actually, we won't be storing the confidential data in the app settings file, but we'll use something called uh, Azure Key Vault. Uh, so if you don't know what Azure is, Azure is a, a cloud platform by Microsoft. So we'll be creating some services, which is the Key Vault service uh, in Azure. And we'll store the confidential secrets there, but we'll still be reading it from the app settings file so that uh, your application does not know the difference between a normal app setting and a confidential setting, which is coming from the key vault. Okay, so let's get going. So first I will just show you uh, an interesting way to retrieve uh, values from the uh, app settings file. Uh, I usually use it because it's uh, uh, convenient uh, as it's already uh, added in the dependency injection framework of uh, .NET. Uh, it's uh, called uh, options pattern. So let's uh, see how we can go about it. So first of all, uh, let me just create a setting uh, in the app settings.json. So what I'll do is I'll just create setting. I'll name the section as organization. Uh, I'll give it a name value called my organization and address, uh, let's say Bangalore, India. And let me also give a confidential data here. Okay. Usually in your production scenarios, uh, pr production scenarios, we won't be uh, keeping any confidential data secret keys, uh, then subscription keys in the app settings file uh, as storing them in plain text uh, visibly is a bit of a risk. So that's why we'll be storing them in key vault. But for now, let's see, uh, I'm just storing it here. Let's say test one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is my confidential data and these are my normal properties of uh, the organization. Okay, so now since we have stored this, uh, let's go ahead uh, and uh, use the options pattern. And mm, the way I use it is I'll go to application folder. Now inside uh, common, let me just create another folder and I will call it application config options. Call it application config options. Once that's done, let me just create a class. Uh, it's like a POCO class, which will be representing these settings. So let me call it organization options. I'll just add the class. Let's call, name it as organization options. Or let's call it organization option. Since it's a class, we'll make it singular organization option. Uh, let's just remove this, make it a public sealed class. Remove all this. Okay, and I'll just create the properties. The properties will be similar to what are there in the organization section. So since the section name is organization, I've named this as organization option. Uh, it's a good naming convention. So if you have another section name, say employee section, you can just call the options associated to them as organization option, option so that you can create various option setups and inject them separately in using the dependency framework, uh, dependency injection framework. Uh, okay, so once we have created this, uh, next thing what we'll do is create uh, organization options uh, setup. So for that, uh, I'll create another class here and name it as organization options setup. Options setup.
wallet organization option set up and let's remove this let's create public and what it needs uh, what we need to do is we need to inherit from i configuration options i configure options configure options of and the type will be the one which we have just created that is organization option and then what we can do is we can just implement the interface it has a configure property which we need to implement and now what we'll do is we'll create a constructor let's say and we'll inject the i configuration interface we'll just create a private read only property so this is by default uh, dependency injected in the configuration setting okay so i will just create it here map it and then what we need to do is i will just say configuration so here what we are doing is we are actually binding the values from app settings to this particular object so that we can use it throughout our application so configuration dot get section we'll use get section and the name uh, of the section is organization so this is our section so we'll use the name of our section we'll call it organization and dot bind and we'll say options so this is binding all the values from organization section to this particular object uh yeah another thing is instead of just hard coding we'll make use of the uh, global constants file which we have already created so we go to utilities global constants and i'll create another static class inside this so that we can keep all our uh, um, app setting sections there separately so i will just call this as another static class configuration sections and organization and now we can just use this instead of this so we'll just say global constants dot configuration sections dot organization okay so similarly for a uh, different kind of sections you can create a constant like this so that we are not hard coding strings everywhere in the application okay so once this is done uh, the next thing what we need to do is go to dependency injection that is in the configuration folder so if we move to configuration folder dependency injection what we do here is we will configure the organization option setup and the way we can do it is we'll just say services dot configure options configure options and the type will be organization options setup organization options setup which we have just created and that's it so now we can use uh, this as dependency injection in any of our controllers so what i'll do is let's go to our company's controller uh, actually let's go to version 2 of the company's controller because we have an extra method here we can just use this and what i'll do is i will first go and inject it so the way we can inject it is we can just say organization option organization option the one which we have just created and we'll just also inject it here but when we are injecting it here what we need to do is we have to say i options i options of organization option 
and we say option here or option and we just map it and while mapping it what we do is we just say organization option dot value okay so that will give us the value of all the properties there okay so now we have the organization option so we can use it here let's have a look at it if we are getting the value so we'll just use organization option and have it here and let's quickly put a breakpoint and let's see if we can retrieve these settings in our controller so let's fire up our api Let's wait till the server is starting up. And yes, we are good to go. Let's just go to PI yeah, documentation. Let's go to version two controllers and we have companies count. Let's see if we have put a breakpoint there so that we can just test it. Yes, we have put a breakpoint. Let's go back and try out and see if you see the breakpoint is now just hit. And now if you hover on this and we are actually getting the object filled with the settings from the app settings file. But one issue still here is we are storing the confidential data in plain text in the app settings file. And that's a security breach. Uh, so, to mitigate this, what we'll be doing is we'll be using Azure Key Vault uh, to store all our secrets. And let me show you uh, what is the process which we'll be doing. So, uh, so if you see, this is the documentation which I'm referring. So I'll put the uh, links in the description of the video so you can just have a look at it. So it's documented like this. So. Let's go to Azure. So if you come here, so this is the Azure portal. So uh, as you see, I have just registered myself. Uh, so you can uh, do, a, if you don't, do not have, uh, if you are not working for a project of a company which already has a subscription to Azure, what you can do is you can just uh, create a, a one month uh, trial of the Azure subscription. They give a one month trial which is free of cost. You just need to register your credit card and they don't charge you uh, anything for it. And you will get a uh, monthly uh, credit for a particular month. So if you just see, I have a credit remaining. So I can uh, use it and practice anything I want. Okay. So if you see now, I've already created a resource group. Resource group uh, is a must to create so, uh, so that you can refer to any of the Azure tutorials and they'll guide you along. So once you have created the resource group, uh, what we need to create is key vault. So if you see there's key vaults here. So let me just bring up a, a diagrammatic representation of how it will be looking. So what we'll be doing is we'll have uh, a scenario wherein our application or our API will be on uh, a web server or a machine. So if you see, this is our application. And this is the Azure subscription. Now in Azure subscription, this is the Azure key vault where we'll be storing all our secrets. But what we need is we need an app registration to be created in Azure Active Directory. And I'll show you what that is so that uh, our application can talk to the uh, Azure key vault on behalf, um, uh, so, uh, sorry, the app registration can talk to the Azure key vault on behalf of our application. So this will be uh, acting like the uh, intermediary between both these. And the way we set up the communication between them is by using uh, X509 certificates. Okay, so now um, if, uh, so usually you don't use it for your local machines because 
uh, your local development secrets, you don't store it on Azure. It will only be for production usage. Uh, for development, what uh, we'll do, I'll show you just after this. But for uh, for you to know the process, I'll just show you how you can also show uh, store development secrets there. But that's not recommended. This is only for uh, production usage. Okay, so what we do is uh, uh, we'll generate a self-signed certificate, which is X509 assert, which has a public-private key pair. So a cert file and uh, a PVK file will be generated. Now that private uh, key will be uploaded to your local machine's certification store. Okay. And the public key, what we'll do is we'll, uh, uh, and the public key will be uploaded to Azure app registration. So in Azure app registration, you can upload the cert file. And once you do that, you will get a certificate thumbprint that thumbprint will be we'll be putting it in our uh, app settings so that the application knows which particular uh, app registration has connection to our machine machine's uh, certificate so that it can easily authenticate the keyword okay so that's uh, the process we'll be doing now so if you just see here i've already created an azure app registration so if I just create, so I've created my organization app registration. If you just click on that and go to overview. So these are all the details which we'll be needing. So I will just store them one by one. So I will need the application or client ID. Let's store all the values one by one. Application or client ID. Then next thing what I'll be needing is the directory ID. Directory ID or the tenant ID. And the uh, next thing what we need is uh, a key vault URI. So let's create the key vault first and then we'll uh, get the URI. So to create the key vault, we just need to go here on key vaults and just create a new key vault. <clears throat> let's say, let's choose my resource group, which already exists. I'll say my org key vault. And I'll just specify my location. My test or key vault. Yeah. Okay, so let me select a region where I'll just select India, West. Is there West India available? Let's have a look at it. Yeah, West India and pricing will be standard. I'll just click on next and I'll just keep the defaults and review and create. And I'll just say create. So once the creation is done, it will just let me know. So now the deployment uh, is in progress. So once the Azure Key Vault is created, what we'll do is we'll just take the Key Vault URI and use it here. I'll uh, save it here. So let, let's go back to our application. I think the Azure Key Vault is created. So let's go to the resource and just get the uh, URI from the overview. So if we go to Key Vault, you first need to go to overview and then just copy this uri and let's save it here okay so now let's go back to our application so we'll just create uh, the settings which we need so i will just create them and keep so that we can quickly add them so i'll just create value for this as your key vault so I'll tell you what this is all about. Let's remove this, remove this, remove this. Okay, so now we'll store the values which we have just got. We've got as your app registration application ID or app ID or client ID, which you have just stored. So let's put that.
we've also got the directory ID. So let's also put the directory ID in place. And followed by the app, uh, the keyword URI. We'll also put the keyword URI there. Okay, once that's done, the next thing which is uh, pending is uh, certificate thumbprint. So now what we'll do is uh, we need to set up uh, or establish this connection. Uh, so for that, uh, your app registration needs to have read rights on the Azure Key Vault. So let's do that. So I need to go to Key Vault and access control. I'll just copy the name of my app registration first so that I can give access to it. My organization app, Reg. So I'll go to my keyboard, I'll go to access control. I will add role assignment. And first thing what I'll do is I'll give myself uh administrator role yeah so i'll just say keyboard administrator and go to members and select a member and i'll give myself i'll give myself the administrator role so that i don't encounter any permission issues Review and assign. Yeah, the next thing what I'll do is I'll add another role and I'll give the app registration which we have created uh, key vault reader role. So, or key vault secrets user. So, key vault secrets user reads the contents only works for key vaults and Azure BH role. So, I'll just mention it as key vault secrets reads metadata the secret keys not read sensitive values such as secret contents yeah so we'll use key vault secret user we give the role key vault key vault secret user Go to members, select a member or service principal. So our service principal name is my organization app reg. So I will give key old secret user role to my app registration so that that permission is already set up. Okay, once this is done, I think we are pretty much good to go now. Uh, what we now need to do is we need to create these certificates, self-signed certificates. Uh, for your uh, uh, for for the purpose of this demo, I'm just showing uh, uh, the creation of self-signed certificates. Uh, but usually, uh, as I've already mentioned, for develop for uh, storing development uh, secrets, you don't store it on the key vault. This is only for a production environment. So, uh, in case of that. Uh, there is something called a certificate a certificate store which is on your system. So if you just go to this, if you just go to Windows Run and type cert mgr.msc, cert mgr.msc, it should give you all the uh, current user certificates. So current user is a uh, certificate store location uh, where the certificates for your uh, certificates for your system are shown. Okay, so once that's done, uh, what this is uh, the place where you can upload your certificates. And now if, uh, in case of uh, a production system, you will just have to use uh, Windows R and certlm.msc. So when you use this, what uh, will happen is this will open up and mostly on web servers or VMs, uh, the certificates will either be placed in personal or in web hosting 
certification stores. Based on that, uh, where the certificates are uploaded in your application configuration setting, we can put the keyword search store name as either personal or web hosting, et cetera. And also uh, currently, since we will be using it on our dev machine, uh, uh, I'll use the current user store, uh, current user store location. If you are deploying it on a machine, uh, or a VM or your production server, this will be local machine instead of uh, current user, okay? So now once uh, that's done, let's go to create the certificates. And to create the certificates, we will use some commands here. So we'll first use this command. I'll just have the folder ready here. So what I need to do is I need to open up my Visual Studio command prompt, so developer command prompt. So I just open up my Visual Studio developer command prompt. CLS, and I will just come here. I'll create the C uh, certificates in my test folder here. And what I just need to do is I just need to copy this command. So if, if you see this, it is make cert S min, uh, minus SV and then your the name of your uh, private key, whatever you are giving. So I've uh, named it as same my org app, my org app dot cert and the uh, start date and the expiry time and you just click on enter. So once you do that, it will give you a, a prompt to enter the password so that's the password you will enter for while creating the certificate so that the same password you have to uh, enter when you are installing that certificate in the machine's certification store or certificate store so i'll just say some password here and confirm password And then it will give you another prompt to again confirm your password. So once that's done, if we just see now in our test folder, our cert file and the private key file are created. Now the next step is to install this certificate in your uh, system, you need to have a PFX file. So uh, by install, I mean, uh, once your certificate is installed, it will go and sit in your, uh, personal certificate store, okay? So let's go ahead and use the second command. So I will just copy this. I'll paste it. For this, uh, what we need to use is we need to use a tool called pvk to pfx. So we already have a, P a pvk, but we need to create a pfx file so that we can install it in the uh, local machine store. So again, this command is pvk my org app dot pvk this this and then i give my password just say password one two three okay now when you enter and if this command does not work or it says not found or some errors like these that means pvk to pfx tool it's like an exe which is not installed in your system so if that's the case uh, you can just check the documentation online of uh, uh, pvk to pfx and it will uh, show you that it needs a Windows latest version of Windows SDK to be installed. So it's already installed on my system and I've even configured the uh, path of that after installation in my uh, environment variables. That's why it should work for me. Okay, so if it does not work, uh, then uh, what it says is password incorrect or uh, PVK file is corrupted. So let me just... Uh, we just put the password. Okay, yeah, I think the password I've put it is wrong. So let me just create it again and give the same password. Let's let me delete these here. I'll just create the previous step again and give the passwords again as ESSWRD123. 
C-A-S-S-W-O-R-D-1-2-3. Let me confirm it again. Okay, now I have created the certificates. Yeah, now let's run the next command. And I've used the same password. So now if you go back to the test folder and it has created our PFX file as well. And the way you install it now is you just click here, it will give you a wizard. It just say current user, next. I'll just say next. I'll just put my password. Word one, two, three. And I'll just say next. I'll just say automatic next and finish. So once that's done, it will say imported successfully. And if you just check here in your certificates, you should have it. So I already have it, my org app. Okay. Uh, in case of uh, uh, if you are deploying it on a production server, the certificates will already be there. You just need to export the certificates or get it exported by some IT professional and have the cert file. So now we, since we have uploaded the uh, uh, certificate in our certification store, the next step is to establish this connection. And for that, what we need to do is we need to upload the uh, cert file to the Azure app registration, which we have created. So let's do that now. <clears throat> So let's go to Azure. Uh, I'll go to my app registration. And once I do that, I will just go to secrets and certificates. I'll go to certificates and upload, and I'll select my cert file here. So test, so this is my cert file. I'll just say, Certificate for Azure Key Vault Secrets. Okay, and I'll just add it. So once the certificate is added, what we need to do is we need to copy the thumbprint value from here. So copy the thumbprint. And we have to save it in the app settings file. So I'll just paste it here. And we'll go to our app settings and save the certificate thumbprint here. Yeah, so once that's done, we are good to go. And let's now create another class. So let me go to configurations in API. So I'll create a folder called configuration if it's not there. So it's already there. We have folder called configurations. Now here, I'll create another folder called Azure Key Vault. Okay. And what we need to do now is uh, tie up the pieces or configure it with your API. So for that, what we need to do is uh, we first need to download a NuGet package. So we go to NuGet and we download this package. So let's right click here and go to manage NuGet packages and I'll download azure.extensions.aspnet core configuration.secret. So this is the uh, NuGet package we need to download. Let's download the latest version of it and let's install it. And once once that's installed, we'll see it here. Yes. So once that's done, let's configure it. <clears throat> so for that, first what I'll do is I'll just create a extension method inside this. 
so that we can then use it here. So in the folder we have created Azure Key Vaults, I will just create a class, call it Azure Key Vault Configuration. Let me add the class quickly. I'll name it as Azure Configuration.cs. Let's remove this. Yeah, now let's name it as static. Okay, now what I'll do is I will paste in the logic in the extension method. So I'll create a new extension method here, what we'll be doing. So if you see here now, what I'm doing is I'm creating an extension method for configure as your key vault, passing in the builder that is web application builder. And now what I'm doing is I am trying to read the configurations from the app settings uh, that is associated to the connection, which we have just created. And I'm using them here. So key vault secret store name, if it is personal or if it is some other, then use that. So this is the logic. If it is for a local machine, it is this. Okay, so this is, uh, and then it is also reading the thumbprints here. And then if there are any issues, it is just printing the errors. Okay, and finally, we are adding the Azure Key Vault to our configuration. So we are passing in the Key Vault URL, which you have just configured. And then we are also passing the app registration directory ID and the application ID and using the certificate file. Now there's another thing which we need to create, which is called as a prefix. So now uh, we can have different versions of uh, secrets stored uh, in the key vault. So if, uh, if you see the key vault, so this is where we'll store the values. So if I go to my test or key vault and go to secrets, this is where we'll be adding the secrets and the way we can add the secrets, I'll just show you, uh, but you can add different versions of the secrets. Okay. Uh, usually I used to add uh, secrets of uh, multiple environments in the same key vault, but uh, if you just refer the documentation of Microsoft, they have suggested or recommended not to do that. So if you see, this is the documentation use a prefix key. So if you see the warning, they've said not to use uh, secrets of multiple environments in one key vault. So instead you can just uh, keep the versions. So that's why what uh, we'll be doing is we'll be having the version. So that's the reason why you have this version uh, key vault prefix setting here. So uh, what this means is uh, the way we'll adding the name of the secret in Azure is using a particular pattern. So that pattern will be, we'll just show that. So for that first, let's come here. And the main purpose of us doing this exercise was to remove this confidential data from here. So let's just remove it from here. So we no longer have it in the app settings file as plain text. Let's place it here for a moment. And the way we'll have it in our Azure Key Vault is in the form of a pattern. So the pattern will, will be first the version number. That is, let's add it now. So let's generate, uh, let's say it's manual. First will be the version number, version one. Then the next thing will be the section name. So if you see the section name here is organization. So let's call it organization. And then we'll put two dashes and then we'll put the name of the setting. And then the value of the setting will be as it is. So this will be the value of the secret key. Let's paste it here and content type, let's say text, and then create the setting. Okay, so now if you see, we have the setting here to match this pattern. Okay, I think we have made a spelling mistake here. So we can just 
avoid that typo and we'll just use the same typo here so that we don't get any errors. Okay, so now uh, one piece pending is to uh, know, tell your system that uh, Azure is using certain uh, patterns to store the keyword names. So that's why we'll just create this uh, class here, prefix keyword secret manager. So let's go back to this folder and add this new class. I'll just paste it quickly. I'll call it public seal class prefix keyword and what we'll do is we'll just inherit from keyword keyword manager keyword secret manager okay and what we'll do is we'll just create a constructor and a prefix you see it will take in the prefix that is whatever we are getting from the app settings and then we have these two overrides here we'll override the methods so we'll take in so what this will do is it will take in the values by stripping it from the pattern we are mentioning there and we are calling it from here so it will all be fine so now finally what we need to do is we just need to tie it up so we go to program files, uh, program.cs and there we just need to call just before the app.build, we just say builder. Dot, and we will just use the extension method which we have just created. So that will just trigger that logic which we have put in to configure the Azure key vault. Now the so now that we have done that, let's see if it takes effect now. So we no longer have the confidential data in our app settings file. We have configured to connect to Azure and we have the confidential data in Azure now. Let's see if we are able to read it from here. Okay, let's put a breakpoint in this so that we know that this is configured correctly and let's go to the same controller company's controller and let's try to start our api and check if we are on the right track so the api is loading and if you see the breakpoint is hit Let's see if we are good and the API is running. That means we are good to go here. So there are no errors. So all the configuration should be working fine. So now if we go to companies count and try to call this endpoint and the breakpoint is hitting here. So if I check this here now, if you see, we have successfully pulled the confidential data from Azure keyword. So we are no longer storing it in the app settings file here, confidential data stored in Azure, but for the application, it does not matter from where it is coming. It's as good as it's in the app settings file. Okay. So this is uh, the scenario wherein we store it in production. But now uh, the one, uh, one, difference here is when you are developing it uh, uh, i had shown it to you just for demo purpose how to create the cell signed certificates and how to just test it how it will actually work when you have deployed it to the server but for development purpose it's not uh, a good practice to store your development secrets on azure key vault because it will uh, since it's a paid resource it will simply cost you so the best approach is uh, to use uh, something called as user secret store for development or developer secret. So if you just refer to the same documentation of Microsoft, uh, what it says is for development, 
we need to use secret stores. So for that, what we'll do is we'll just come to program CS and we'll just use this if we are going to production. That is, we'll say builder dot environment builder dot environment dot is production. Is production so only if it is production we will configure the azure key vault if not then we'll just use it from some other place and what that some other place is i'll just show it to you here now so what we can do is you just have to right click on your api project and go to manage user secrets once that's done what it will do is so if you just go to manage user secrets it will create a file for you called secrets json where it will be stored in this particular folder called user secrets so if you see i have a secrets id a new folder which is created under this user secrets that is your app data roaming microsoft user secrets now this is the place where you will need to uh, replicate your uh, confidential data. So I'll just create, copy the section here and this won't be there. We'll just have confidential data. Here, data. And let's say it's test one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So this is when you are developing this file will remain on your system and if you are checking in the source uh, source code to any source control software these secrets or confidential data won't be going to uh, source uh, source code repositories so that it remains confidential and remains on your system and when you switch to production and deploy it on the server you can take the uh, secrets from azure so that's the whole approach here so once we have it here uh, you can just edit the project file and see how it creates it. So if I just edit the project file and now if you see it has created a user secrets ID and it, this is the same ID which is stored in user secrets folder and where our file is stored. So this is where the application will read the secrets from. Okay, so now since we have created this and now we are no longer using from production. So we'll just put a breakpoint here to check if it is actually configuring key vault now or no. But still we should manage to get the key vault, uh, we should uh, get the confidential data, but this time not from the key vault, but from your local user secret store. So let's have a look at it, how it is working now. Now, if I just click here, so if you see it skipped because we are still in debug mode or development mode and not in production. So key vault is not configured now and nor uh, do we have any secrets in the app settings file. But if we just run the API and run the same endpoint and check if we are still getting the confidential data, let's go to V2 companies, get count. And now if we just debug this and have a look, we are still getting the data. So now this is coming from your user secrets file. And I think that was it from this tutorial. It was uh, a pretty long one, but this is the, this is a core uh, of how you use uh, app settings and also carrying it to your production development. Okay. Yeah. So that's it from this tutorial. Let's meet in the next one.